Hey guys, welcome back to Gift Talk, um, where I talk about everything nerdy, movie, video games, whatsoever. Um, I love all of it. So today I am actually going to be making this video based off of my top uh, top favorite Star Wars films, going from the worst to the best, in my opinion. Um, but uh, I am going to make a few disclaimers just before this. Um, I start this video. First of all, yes, these are my favorite movies, and these are my opinion. Um, for all the trolls out there who are going to say that uh, I'm not a true Star Wars fan, um, you know, I, it's, I'm 37 years old, 36 years old, roughly around that. I started when I was four years old. Um, watching the movies, loving the movies, collecting the figures, the posters, what not. And I love it, all of it. I really do. But I have officially gone through and watched every movie except for the exception of one. And I can honestly say that I think a lot of people have not seen that one. It is the, uh, the Star Wars Holiday Special. I haven't seen that one. But, um, so it won't be on my list. But, you know... These are in the order that I liked them. I personally liked them. I don't think there's any rule on which one's the greatest, um, which one's, you know, arguably or non-arguably the best. You know, there's no rule saying that no, something has to be at number one or number four or number five. You know, me personally, this list is constantly changing as I revisit the movies, as I, I think about the movies. But at this point, at this time, these are the, um, this is the order based on my own opinion and nothing else. Um, many of you will, will just like the order that I have them in. So I will honestly say this. No, I will not go kill myself. Yes, I am a true fan. No, I have no Disney money in my pocket. Um, although I, I admit I loved what they've been doing with the new movies. This is just my list. It's not going to be swayed. It's not going to be pushed aside, you know, by yours. And you can have your opinion. I like that. But I'm also allowed to have mine. And there's a difference. And there can be contrasting. And both of us can be right. Both of us can be wrong. So just going to put those out. And also, I don't know why I'm adding this, but uh, the second disclaimer is... Um, it is actually for George Lucas, and I do want to say I apologize as a nerd, as a fan, Star Wars fan. Um, I want to apologize to you, not that you'll ever see this. Just that, you know, you gave us something very special. You made it, you shared it with us, and we criticized it to the point where you no longer wanted to make the movies. That was wrong of us. And I think a lot of people are seeing that, but even if... You know, Disney had done spectacular stuff with Marv, with, uh, you know, the Star Wars franchise. It still would have been wrong because it was your creation. It was your baby. It was your movie. It was your story to be told. And we took it and treated it as ours and literally just criticized you to the point where you no longer wanted to do them. And as a fan, I think that's that's not right. That's absolutely not right. Um, so hopefully you'll forgive us. Not like I said, not that you'll ever see it. This is also gonna be a long video, so I have my water here. Every now and then I'll take a drink of it. So, all right. Well, let's get started. So the number um, I actually have eleven on my list. I included them all except for the. Um, so for the Christmas special. And number 11, and if you see me, I'm looking at my notes. Number 11 is Clone Wars. Now, I am going to be doing both good and bad. And yes, there are good things about Clone Wars. Um, probably the things that I like the best is, you know, Yoda picked up a lightsaber for the first time. We actually got to see him fight. That was amazing for me. That is, you know, since I've seen... Empire Strikes Back and saw that character, I've always kind of wanted to know um, what he was capable of. Yes, a lot of people thought he was a little too jumpy, a lot too, you know, summary, uh, doing somersaults in the air, all that. For me, it was perfect. 
I, I absolutely loved it. Um, I thought it was a very enjoyable fight between him and Count Dooku. So I really did like that. Um, they also introduced why Princess Leia's joke, aren't you a little young or a little short to be a stormtrooper? Yeah, that made sense because we find out that all the stormtroopers started as clone troopers and they're all the same height and uh, build and all that because they're all taken from Jango Fett. It also shows why stormtroopers are so um, bad, you know, shots. Because as you keep, you take a genetic cloning, if you take just the sample of that DNA or that blood or whatever, um, and you keep using it over and over and over and over again, eventually it, it, you take the, the first one and you take the last one, and they're not going to match anymore. They lose their potency. So why stormtroopers at the point of New Hope and... Um, Return of the Jedi, they were on their last leg as Stormtrooper Troopers, and that's why in uh, Force Awakens and um, Last Jedi, they were actually trying to replenish by bringing in other people. Uh, which, you know, I love that, that line of the story. So that was something good about the Clone Wars. Some of the acting, definitely not the best, and believe me, the love story between Anakin and Padme... You, you kind of want to tear your eyes out. Um, while I do, I didn't mind Hayden Christensen's, you know, um, acting all that badly. I, it just, you know, it was subpar. And I think a lot of people just honestly tore it down quite a bit. I'm not saying he's a genius. I'm not saying he's Oscar worthy by any means. I'm just saying, you know, he honestly could have done better. He honestly could have done better. So we'll move on to the next one, Revenge of the Sith. Now, um, this is at my number 10 spot. Um, to be honest, there's very few things I like about this um, movie. The the fight between Obi-Wan and... Um, uh, oh, crap, what's his name? General Grievous. That was pretty spectacular. Um, really happy to see that, you know, actually seeing Mace Windu, which is another good care, great character, you know, played by Samuel L. Jackson. He was kind of really showcased. You see, he had a chance to actually finish off the empire, um, the emperor before he even got started. Um, you kind of wonder what kind of person Darth Vader would have been or Anakin would have been if he was then then had become the the leader of the Sith at that time. But uh, no, Anakin had to, um, you know, get involved. He ends up coming pretty close, if not killing Mace Windu. And, you know, I like the character. I, I, I was sad at that point, but it was a pretty good fight between him and the Emperor. And then um, just that last battle between Obi-Wan and Anakin, um... You know, I thought it was good. I thought it was enjoyable. Although there is some flaws that, you know, he can't jump, jump 10 feet. So, um, yeah, the the movie, the main part about it, I didn't like it is, is, again, some of the acting was very um, cheesy. Um, it was not up to the standards that I'm used to. Um and let's face it, you know, the whole scene with uh, Anakin killing a bunch of kids, it, it kind of struck home. Um, I didn't like that part at all. Yes, I know it was necessary to show what kind of a, a villain he was going to be, but it, I just didn't like it. Um, in the whole movie, I think I've only watched this movie once. And, you know, I just, I and that was in the theaters. I haven't, I own it. I don't, I haven't watched it. I really haven't, so, um, you know, if it, if it had, um, any more wrong, anything more wrong with it, I would have put it at number 11, but as it is, I, I put it at number 10 because of those, those fights that were so good. So, the second one is, or, I'm sorry, the ninth one, 
I gotta get the order right. Ninth one is Phantom Menace. Now, um, I know a lot of people, you know, give uh, George Lucas a lot of crap for this movie, Jar Jar Binks, and just everything else. But we do get to see Liam Neeson place, um, you know, be a, a, a Jedi Knight, and then you have it introduces Ewan McGregor as you know Obi Wan. You know, we get to see Yoda and the rest of the Jedi's. Um, I liked it. I, I thought that was a decent part. The pod race scene's always really good. And it introduces Ara Singh to the um, on screen. You know, puts her in a movie. Uh, if you've seen Solo, you know that uh, she's actually brought up. So, it, it can, I like how they're tying everything together. But uh, And Darth Maul, um, spoiler alert. That's another thing that you'll you'll see, um, and I am kind of curious to see how he goes from Phantom Menace to main bad one of the main bad guys in uh, Solo. So, really, uh, I would like to see a movie um, based on him. Uh, much much better than I'd rather see that crappy Boba Fett movie. So I'm sorry, I'm not a big fan of Boba Fett either. So, um, so yeah, Phantom Menace number nine. Um, I don't really need to say much more, you know. Turning's a good trick. All right. Then you have, and these are the ones where it gets a lot harder um, for me because those are kind of meant to be at the bottom where you have, you know, the really movies that you, you have to nitpick a lot more um, from like eight to one. Uh, number eight, New Hope. Um... You know, it was a nice origin story. It was the first Star Wars, you know, that we ever got in theater. It's the one that I personally started on. And my parents introduced me to it. I love it, but, you know, the the eh, the, the ship battle for the Death Star and the fight between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, yes, it is a, a great movie. Yes, it is an enjoyable movie. And there's some very iconic things, um, but it wasn't all that thrilling. And while it was enjoyable, it wasn't all that... It didn't grab you and hold you um, like some of the new ones. That, so I had to put it a little lower on my list. Again, this is not taking anything from any of these movies. Um, I think in their own right, they have their good and bad qualities. And they're all part of a great big universe that, you know that we enjoy you know obviously that's one of the things that i think a lot of people forget is they look at a universe they look at the star wars universe and nitpick at it and criticize it but you know we do enjoy this universe we do you know love these characters and anything that we can get to make the picture just a little more whole just a little more clearer you know i'm i'm more than happy to to get um so yeah, um, New Hope, uh, I had to put it somewhere, and number eight is where I put it. It's what comes at number seven that's probably going to give me uh, a decent amount of crap. Um, and, uh, you know, it is the Ewok movies. I, I enjoy them. I really do. Uh, I know when a lot of people look at Return of the Jedi and they go, oh, you know, Space, the Emperor Empire got beat by space bears. And it's like, there's so much more to those so called space bears. Or as one person put it, uh, a uh, care bear who sold all his magic to get crack cone cane. You know, I, I enjoyed these movies. I like that they were like the first solo movies uh, where they took a character from the universe that we know and they made a solo movie about that character. And, or characters in this case, and that being the Ewoks, and I like the introduction to the the you know to the uh, uh, culture and to the world. And uh, yes, the acting's horrible. Yes, some of the CGI animation is really bad, or the puppetry is really bad. You can actually tell, you know, that it's not very good. But they really did open up a, a new. Um, universe and I really liked it you know that's just me you don't have to you know I understand no big deal 
So, um, number six is The Force Awakens. Um, after the prequels, we kind of looked at it and wondered if Star Wars was going to be good again, whether it was going to be uh, uh, worth watching. And we wanted to know the history because we already had two two trilogies um, come forth and they did pretty good at making different stories and all that. We wanted to know what came next. The Force Awakens was there. I was there opening night. I enjoyed it. You know, it it was a good movie. You know, yes, there are some, a lot of people who hate it, who criticize it. Um, people talk about Ray and Finn, you know, using a lightsaber so easily. Um, you also have to remember they got their butts handed to them. And yes, spoiler alert, Han Solo, um, you know, dies in that one. So... We lose. That's the first loss of a major character, you know, from the original trilogy. But uh, you know, it, it it had a nice feeling to it. It was a good story. Um, it does have some great cameos in it. You know, um, Daniel Craig being the stormtrooper who drops his gun. Um, you get. Uh, I think I believe I read somewhere that Kevin Smith was part of the stormtrooper in the First Order. Um, you know, kind of like rally speech you have all those stormtroopers he's one of those um i know uh, simon Pegg was the you know traitor for junk um for food ration guy you know he was in there it's like you guys you guys gave these people you know even the smallest role and you gave it to him and you says all right you know you wanted to be part of the star wars universe and they took it you know they were happy to have it Heck, I'd, I, me personally, I would love to have a cameo, even if no one recognizes me, recognizes me, yeah. um, I would love it, you know, that'd be awesome. So, no doubt these, these actors were doing well, we got to see the, you know, Han Chewie reunited with the Falcon, got to see Princess Leia again, um, uh, got to see, you know, uh, Han's son, Kylo, and, you know, gave us that shadowy figure, although, yes, it was a lot like the Emperor and General Snoke, or Commander Snoke, um, you know, it was, they're pretty much the same person, but, you know, it's okay, because they, they, Andy Serkis does an amazing job as General Snoke, and, uh, you know, he was just that shadowy figure sitting on a chair, um, you know, not doing anything, so... Um, it was pretty cool. And then they had just a lot of, like I said, they, they introduced that they were use or, uh, teaching other people how to be stormtroopers in the first order. They changed the first order, um, helmet. I really like that. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of good things, a lot of good things. And of course we saw Harry Potter character, you know, be one of the generals or one of the, uh, commanders. So. So, yeah, I really like that one. Um, there are, you know, quite a few that uh, didn't, but I, I liked it. I really did. So, that's number six. All right, guys. Well, we're down to the top five. And at number four, number five is Empire Strikes Back. Now, I know, I know a lot of people are going to say that this is the most perfect movie in Star Wars history. And before I actually did this list, I actually kind of went back and looked at the movies and and just kind of nitpicked at them and looked at the things that I didn't like that I actually liked about this movie. And, um, you know, before that list, this was actually a lot lower. Um, I think it was actually uh, at number nine instead of Phantom Menace. Um, but you know what, I really, as I thought about this movie, I really can't say too much bad about it, you know, um, it does have some amazing characters, it does have some amazing stories, uh, some of the most quote, quotable quotes, um, from any movie ever are in Empire Strikes Back, yes, you pretty much got airmailed, the, uh, you know, big reveal, that he, 
you know, spoiler alert, Darth Vader's Luke's father. It really didn't have that much of a, a impact on me. You know, it did introduce us to Lando Calrissian, Billy D. Williams, extremely nice guy. I got to meet him. Uh, you know, a little shy, a lot shy. Um, it's amazing that he can be as shy as he, as he is and do the roles that he does. So, but, uh, you know, and it, it did introduce, you know, a character that was introduced very first one in the uh, Christmas special, which is Boba Fett. You know, a lot of people love him. Me personally, he's overrated. Um, I love the way that they said it in fanboys. Um, when it comes to battle, he's all um, he's all style and no substance. He's like Michael Bay. You know, um, I think uh, Windows said that he's you know he's got a jetpack, really cool. So did the Rocketeer, and that's his thing. Is he he? There's so much lore, especially you know when these movies came out. They had this great story backstory for him, and then. When Phantom Menace and uh, Clone Wars came out, you had George Lucas change that. And to be honest, I liked the one that, that was established in the book, that he was a mercenary who's not even Mandalorian. He just fell in love with the culture and all that, so he would do these little bounties for bits and pieces of Mandalorian anything. And the one that he was going for to, you know, hunt down... Um, Han Solo was a, a Mandalorian cruiser, which is about the size of a Star Destroyer. Uh, Jabba the Hutt was willing to buy him one of those if he could get Han Solo back. And uh, yeah, I, lo I love that story. Um, but to be honest, he's definitely an overrated character. Uh, I'm not looking forward to the new movie coming out at all, uh, at all. And then the really cool... One of the really cool things was the snow battle at the very beginning and the battle between Luke and, um, you know, Darth Vader at the end. And, of course, we have the first introduction to Yoda. Um, definitely some of the most quotable lines you'll ever get. Um, you know, it's it's a solid movie, but I I don't know what it is. I just don't like it. Um, it's actually my least favorite out of the three. I've watched the original three. Um, I've watched it the least out of those. I, I just, I can't get into it. But, again, this is just my opinion. But it is, you know, it is pretty darn right, you know, perfect. There's very, very little to nitpick at. And that's all you would be doing is nitpicking. It's just, for some reason, I didn't like it. So, yeah, let the fur fly, let the keyboards get overheated. Uh, I didn't like Empire Strikes Back. I'm still not killing myself. So, all right, guys. Well, number uh, four is Rogue One. Um, it was just another story where I, I loved that it was another solo story. It was, um, you know, a side story that introduced a brand new set of characters and yes, although it had a very tragic ending, it did kind of give you a little more of a glimpse into the the world. It shows you how the Death Star plan, uh, plans got stolen. Um, it shows you that the another side of the Rel rebellion that you 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 know don't get to see very often, and it just gave it more depth and more substance. And you know, it was it was a really good movie, and the characters were were great. Um, you know, I, I really did like him. Um, you know, I thought that was that was a good good movie. So um, next is um, Rogue uh, Rogue One is Solo, and uh, a lot of people are probably gonna you know hate hate on me for this one too. Um, this is being number three Solo, and uh, yeah, I loved it. Um, Chewbacca and Han Solo. Actually, you know, as a team, I've always wanted to see, and I, ever since New Hope, for almost 30-odd years, I have been waiting patiently, patiently, to see Chewbacca rip somebody's arms off, and sure enough, he did it, and I went bonkers. Um, 
and just to see how they met and just the characters that were around and see how the rebellion got started you know and how han had helped the rebellion and and all that and then seeing you know darth maul at the end it, it just yes i knew he was still alive but i guess at some point i thought he died and just kind of crawled back in the hole he was in this actually changed my mind it, it showed that he was in the thick of it and i actually want to see his end story but uh the kid who played Han Solo did a pretty decent job. He wasn't, you know, Harrison Ford, obviously. Um, you know, Lord, if we can only turn back time and have a young Han Solo or young Harrison Ford playing Han Solo, you know, that would be amazing. But unfortunately, we can't. Um, so they had to do with do what they, they could. And yes, there were some parts that, that were, you know, arguably bad. Um, you know, the, the guy playing Han Solo actually trying to talk Wookiees or whatever they call it to Chewbacca. And he says, yeah, I speak a little, <laughs> you know, all that, that, that was a little lame, but for the most part, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I went back, went in with no expectations. This is actually one of the few movies I've didn't go to opening night. Um, this was actually like a few weeks later that I actually, we went to go see this movie, and I enjoyed it. I gave it a, a solid 8 out of 10 um, when I did my review. So I actually did enjoy it. So Number two is The Last Jedi. I know it's, a, again, it's one of those controversial movies um, that nobody liked. You know, the idea of running out of gas, the idea of, you know, women being so prominent in the Star Wars universe, you know. There's so many criticisms of this movie, and I don't believe in any of them. You know, when, you know, running, I guess, is a legitimate plot. You know, you have generals, you know, females coming to the prominence. Well, that's what happens when a rebellion starts or a rebellion happens in history. Those who, you know, when the men get killed off or, or a lot of the army, you know, it gets obliterated. Sometimes women have to step up. And in that case, I actually thought they did a very good job in showing how a rebellion would go and how the story would go. Um, and I have no problem with it. If you don't like, you know, general twilight sparkles, as a lot of people have called it, I, that's fine. That's your right. But I actually liked her, you know, Admiral Holdo, Holdo was a, a good character. You know, I enjoyed it. Um, and then just the main thing that a lot of people got mad at was Luke saying that he uh, he phoned in a, a call, you know, to, to save the world. And it's, like, it's not like that for me. You know, it was a great, you know, ending for Luke Skywalker, which, yes, spoiler alert, he does die at the end. It's like he literally knew he he was going to do something that was going to kill him himself. And yet he did it anyway, just to show, you know, just to save the, his family, the rebellion, you know, it was a great, great act of sacrifice. And a lot of people wanted the, the lightsaber, you know, duel at the end, but you know what? That would have meant that Kylo Ren would have killed Luke or would have injured him enough. So he couldn't fight anymore. And I, me personally, I didn't want Luke to go out like that. You know, we already had Han die by Kylo Ren's lightsaber. I didn't want to see that, you know. So I definitely liked the way they did it. And it wasn't just, you know, phoning a, phoning a friend to save the Empire. This was literally making a illusion, so a, a force illusion so real that two... You know, Leia and Kylo Ren, two strong force users, didn't even realize it was being, they had the, the wolves pulled over their eyes. And to actually have, take something, and like a, a pair of, you know, Han Solo's dice, and, and make them hang around and actually feel natural to hold, you know, to touch, to rub, you know, that's, that's amazing. 
you know, the amount of detail that he had to do that and actually keep the the thing around even after the battle stopped. Even after he couldn't keep his main thing, you know, his main illusion alive, he still kept that so Kylo Ren could actually see the dice and watch them disappear. You know, that was that was very cool. And again, to see Yoda again, which, that was amazing, you know. And just everything else, I enjoyed it. I really did. That fight with Kylo Ren and, and Rey, uh, both light and dark, you know, just taking out the the Red Guards. Um, you know, super, super happy to see that. And Holdo's gamble, Gambit, where she ends up, you know, flying a ship through another one, killing herself to save the Rebellion. That was pretty cool. And the fact that they did, you know, the way they did it with no sound and all that, I was happy with it. A lot of people criticized me for it, but I liked it. Yes, I do think the movie was a little heavy-handed when it comes to rich people are all bad, you know, message. And Rose was not my favorite character, although... I was just so happy that they didn't go with the Poe and Finn, you know, love interest. Um, they gave, you know, Rose a chance. Um, I'm actually excited about that. I, I'm kind of curious to see how it goes, you know, get this Ray and Poe thing going, if they even decide to do that. And now I'm curious to see how it's going to end. Because it's got to, you know. Um, I'm curious to see how this is going to go, so... All right, guys. Well, that brings us down to the last one. If you've been paying attention, you know what my last one is. Return of the Jedi. Yep. This is, for like the longest time when I was younger, my parents would always say, we're going to get pizza and we're going to watch a movie. You have to choose the movie. They didn't have to ask. They knew I was going to see Return of the Jedi because I did love this. The end battle with uh, Luke versus Darth Vader. Darth Vader ended up taking out the emp Emperor. That was awesome. Again, the Ewoks. I love those little guys. Um, you know, and they... It was on their home planet. It was on, on their home turf. They were hunters. They were, you know, killers of animals. They used to obviously ate the animals that they killed. They lived off the land. Uh, you could see this in the costume. You could see that in their village. You could see that in the trap that they ended up, uh, you know, using um, for to capture Luke and Han and Chewbacca and the fact that they were actually cooking them while Luke's, uh, you know, making C-3PO fly and making him a, a god. You know, those those little guys are, are quite amazing. I, I have quite a few uh, memorabilia from, uh, you know, the little Ewoks, and I, I do love them. You know, and then Jabba the Hutt's palace. I mean, who could forget Princess Leia's, you know, metal bikini? I don't know a single person, you know, male-wise who didn't like that. Uh, Carrie Fisher at that time was a, a very attractive, you know, young woman. And, you know, to see that, I, I we can't complain. I, I really can't. You know. And then seeing Jabba the Hutt, his demise, and Boba Fett and his supposed demise... I know they did have him fly out for fight his way out of the Sarlacc pit later on. Sorry. Um, you know, they did have all those all those things and just seeing Lando. I love how in Solo they actually bring out the costume that Lando wears to infiltrate Jabba the Hutt's palace and he they use it for the Solo movie. That was that was super cool. That was super cool. And then you now know why. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention about Solo movie is um, Lando, uh, how you find out that, you know, the his robot companion or whatever you want to call it, girlfriend or whatnot, um, her memory is actually part of the Falcon that explains stuff in the Empire Strikes Back. These were all things I liked. We got to see Lando become a, a, a general in the, the army, the, you know, rebel army. I'm actually kind of curious um, where he is at now. I do want to see, you know, his story eventually, see how he does older. Um, if not in his own solo movie, then maybe in just like another uh, movie. So, 
you know, look definitely looking forward to that. So, but yeah, um, Return of the Jedi, uh, my number one favorite Star Wars movie. So again, guys, these are just my rankings based off my opinion. You know, I, I, it has no effect on how you should love them or how you should like them or whatever. It's just my opinion. So, well, guys, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys, uh, you know, will hit that like button. And if you really want to see more videos about movies, video games, comics, whatever, please hit that subscribe video. I try to make videos as uh, on a ba annual basis as I can, um, or as a regular basis as I can. And yes, I, it's this is raw. You know, there's no chop footage. I probably should learn how to edit and you know put one of those starter, you know, videos. Um, but this is just me talking to you. That's all I've ever wanted this to be. And yes, I know I'm not going to get a lot of subscribers or anything like that, but that's not the point. I came here to talk about things I love. So if you want to see more of that, please hit that subscribe button, guys. I always welcome new people. And if you have any questions or if you um, want to make any comments, please leave them. You know, if they're civil and, you know, respectful, I'll answer them. You know, if not, I'm sorry, I don't, you know, speak hate. So, see you guys later, and have a good day.